been waiting for these two to meet up. Now they do as round one is underway. Parries that punch intended for the head. Rashes home with a hook. As basic as can be, but it works. A jab called by the straight. How important is the jab in a matchup like this, a power puncher against an outside fighter? You know, that's a great question, Joe, because a lot of people would think, and I think wrongly, that the speed guy, the boxer, the jab would be only important to him to stay on the outside, use defense a little bit with that jab separation. But of course, the power puncher, he wants to use that jab to close the gap. Each man able to land an uppercut. Double jab upstairs. Halfway through round number one. Oh, what a hook upstairs. That's a forceful two-punch combo by Muhammad Ali. Smart punch right there. The uppercut works. Smart jab by Muhammad Ali. Butterbean's right hand scores well. Muhammad Ali's got a cut around his eye. Looks to be below his eye. Stay away from the inside. Keep your head moving. You're still not moving enough. Move, move. Come on. Very accurate two-punch combo by Muhammad Ali. Caught by that right hand. He never saw it coming. He may be looking to clinch here. It's like a whole new fighter out there. Look at him as we start this round. Remember what happened to him in the last round. Now he's up on his toes. Yeah, well, remember what happened to him in the last round. That's what we say, but he doesn't say that. He's putting that out. He's putting it into the rear view mirror. He's going forward down the road with a lot of hope, a lot of vigor, a lot of confidence. Muhammad Ali's rocked by a huge hook to the head. That's a well-scored left hand by Muhammad Ali. Covers up nicely, gets rid of his opponent's body shot. Nice job snapping those jabs by Muhammad Ali. There's the uppercut, one of my favorite punches, and it works that time for him. Reaching the halfway mark of this round. Butterbean's right hand working well that time. He scored well. Able to... He did not see that right hand at all. He may want to tie up. Good hook by Muhammad Ali. Oh, what an uppercut. Boy, sharp two-punch combination by Muhammad Ali. Oh. Ali is doing what every trainer wants to see their fighter do. Land punches and bunches. The combination lands. Keep that head moving. And we come to the end of the round, and he really got to his opponent that time, Teddy. He stunned him. Oh, he stunned him. He's hearing the little tweeting going on, a little singing from the birds in his head. Good exchange. He fires back. Well-placed, well-timed combo up top. He just looks exhausted to me right now. Butterbean's accuracy is non-existent. This guy cannot punch a solid target right now. No, but what this shows is he's missing so many shots. We always think about the damage done when they land. This is showing you the damage that's done when they miss. You get discouraged. You start giving in. Hmm. 
He took a shot, but he gives one of his own. A left hand scores. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. He returns the favor with an uppercut. Keeping his hands up, getting rid of his opponent's offense. Look at Muhammad Ali and his ability to avoid punches here. He's got it every which way. He's slick, he's smooth, he blocks and parries. Good defense. Really good job by Ali. And now he scores well with the straight right. Ali's putting that old boxing theory to work. And that's carry that walking stick and it'll take you far. Yeah, you're talking about that jab. He's doing a good job. But, you know, the jab's not enough. You have to be educated with where to use the jab from. And that's what he's doing a good job with. If you throw a jab from too close, you can get time with the jab killer. The right hand. He's throwing that jab. Oh, there it is! Oh, this is going to be close. He may be able to survive the round, but he has gone down now. Well, he's up three rounds to zip on Teddy's scorecard here as we start round number four. He's a volume puncher, and that's exactly what he's doing to bank away these early rounds here, Teddy. Yeah, he's not hurting him with any of those shots, and quite honestly, a lot of them are missing. But the other guy's not staying up with him with the punch numbers. He's winning the round. Butterbean swinging and missing like he's at bat right there. That punch was nowhere near his opponent. right back with the left hand solid right by Muhammad Ali oh a big shot comes home for him and for the second time tonight he goes down We welcome you. 15 rounds scheduled here in this much anticipated fight. And we are underway with round number one. In a matchup like this, Teddy, we know the outside fighter is going to try to stay away from that power puncher. But what about the outside fighter putting forth his own offense? What can we look for and expect from him? Well, distance will create offense for him. Misses will create offense. What he has to do is allow the aggressive fighter, the power guy, to do some of his work for him. When he tries to get in, make a miss, make him pay. Ali's right in the way of that hook to the head. Oh, that had a hurt. Hooks to the head. Halfway through this round, Butterbean's blocking ability is doing well for him there. Brings the hook that time. There's the headshot, but he parries it away. Look at that combination by Muhammad Ali. Good clean shot, returning fire. Well done by Muhammad Ali. Wow, a big flush blow, the left hand by Muhammad Ali. Red hot action to open up this fight. Both men throwing, both men landing. It's been a long time since I've seen something like this. I think it was in a film library. Watchman Hammer and Hank, the great Henry Armstrong, never took a step backwards, kept going forward. That's a big, big shot he just scored with. And why did he score? Because he created range, created distance, created a hole, and he filled that hole. 
returns on that exchange. And you see what he can do when he sends that right to the head. Good work with the uppercuts. Nice job there. Lance flush with the two-punch combo by Muhammad Ali. Butterbean's impressing the judges and himself with that right hand. What a damaging blow. Nice hook upstairs. Butterbean's right hand scores well that time. How about that exchange? Now he's backing his man up against the ropes. Teddy, there's a certain fire that rages in Muhammad Ali. A lot of it has to do with the early days and some things he faced growing up in Louisville. Yeah, I mean, he's a sensitive person. He's a person that takes that sensitivity and he puts it somewhere in a place, as you said, sort of in a furnace that can burn strong. You know, this was during a time where this country was uh, not at its proudest times, the way that it behaved towards black people, towards African Americans. And he remembers that and he uses that in a positive way, in an athletic way in a way where it just prospers him career-wise. Just 10 seconds to go here in the second round. Butterbean's effort has been admirable, but I don't think he's getting the results he would like to get here. He's tiring himself. Yeah, what I think is starting to happen here, Joe, we saw him throwing a lot of punches, but not real effective punches. I'm wondering now, he's ahead right now in this part of the fight, but I'm wondering if he's getting discouraged because it didn't have the effect on his opponent he wanted it to. Able to cover up along the belt line, blocks that one. Ali's the kind of boxer that wants to do just that. Find the target, get the combination working, land both punches. Excellent jab by Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali's fully committed to utilizing the jab, and I think it's working out well for him early on. Well, it is. It's kind of like, you know, sending static out there. You, you want to scramble somebody's radio signal. You know, that's what the jab does. It scrambles your radio signal, or at least in boxing terms, it throws the other guy's rhythm off. Good step back counterpunch there. Ali's combination punching is just perfect there. Three punches landing. Good counter punch. You see he comes over the top with that right hand. A real solid shot. Ali's tag. Ten seconds to go in this third round. Yeah, Round number four is underway. Teddy's got it a clean sweep. Ali's taken the first three rounds. And Teddy, it's not always the number one indicator, but in this case, he's simply just throwing more punches, and that's why he's up on your scorecard. Yeah, Joe, he's keeping his opponent defensive, and he's not allowing him to do anything back. That is Boxing 101, a nice, crisp combination by Muhammad Ali. Ali's giving us a taste of some of that athletic ability, that hand speed right there. Good combination. And his opponent, though, now is going to have to show us that he could do something to sort of, you know, adjust to this, to counter this. And that's going to be controlling range and timing because he can't match up with the physical hand speed. by a 
counter punch there. And coming upon the halfway mark of this three minute round. Not hitting his mark there going upstairs. Ali's putting his punches together now. That's a nice combination. And he just holds on there. Muhammad Ali with a huge right hand. Fourth round now with its last 10 seconds. I shake it off. Oh, and he returns fire with a left hand. You have to keep your distance. Stay round number five has arrived. Ali's come off the stool for this round, and I like the way he looks. Look at Muhammad Ali and his ability. Solid. Every punch landed in that combination, and he goes down hard. up from the knockdown but what we really want to look for is how he reacts in the coming moments of this fight gets rid of that body shot big big shot comes crashing home oh and now the real test can he get up after going down a second time good evening everyone when you get a fight like this that everybody's been talking about, it's always so interesting to see these opening moments here in round number one. He clinches when he gets to the inside. Takes one, but gives one. Good work by Muhammad Ali. Well-targeted left hand by Muhammad Ali. Now, in the matchup of a power puncher versus a speedy fighter, if you're the power puncher, what do you try to accomplish early on? Well, you better not just be walking in because you'll be walking into a speed tunnel and you'll be getting caught on the way in. You have to control that range a little bit and look to time the speed. That can take speed away. Ninety seconds to go here in this round. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. Ali's right hand did a nice job that time. That worked well for him. He's committed to the combination punching now. It's working out well up top. Grabbing on to his opponent. A well-placed gutsy uppercut after being tagged. The end of the round has arrived. And now an opportunity for the trainer here to get his hands on his guy. His guy just got tagged pretty good there. And when he looks into his eyes, what is he looking for? Well, first of all, he's looking to see whether or not his guy is still there. You know, he got stunned pretty good. And then what he has to do is make sure his guy's listening to him. Muhammad Ali's in bad shape. You can see what he's trying to do there. He wants to create space. A little push, a little shove. Why not? Get away from me. It's tough to have a discussion about Muhammad Ali without bringing up the name of Smokin' Joe Frazier. Their trilogy, perhaps the most documented in the history of the sport. Well, Fred Astaire, maybe the greatest dancer of all time, had to have Ginger Rogers. And you do need somebody to match up with. 
and he found Get that person. No he flag. found that person in every way was the perfect, perfect guy to make great fights with. You know, personality-wise, the opposite of each other. And style-wise, in that ring, the opposite. One guy coming forward, another guy on the outside looking to take advantage of that forward motion. A nice block by Muhammad Ali. And now you can see him utilizing the jab. You know, a lot of times you see a guy on the outside bouncing around, staying away. You understand the use of a jab. But when you're coming forward, you have to come forward with a cover. And that jab, that's the cover. Butterbean scoring with that right hand. Right to the body. That's a good block by Muhammad Ali. Just 10 seconds to go in this round. This round comes to an end. And Teddy, easy to note here that he wasn't landing a lot of punches. Now he was throwing them up, but he wasn't landing a lot. Is that because of his opponent's defense? Muhammad Ali's hurt from that. Stunned, but all of a sudden now, surviving. His opponent wanted the body. He wouldn't give it to him. Ali still has to be careful here, Teddy, but it does appear that he's not on wobbly legs any longer. No, it does. And it also appears that he has a more serious attitude. He's not clowning like he was earlier. Zones in on that overhand right. Super two-punch combo by Muhammad Ali. Butterbean's doing exactly what you should to be a strong defensive fighter. You gotta block those punches away. Pulls the trigger right away with the left hand after getting tagged himself. Ali's ability to stay on the outside and to score and control this fight is very impressive. I know as a trainer, you got to love this. Yeah, exactly. I think that he watched Clint Eastwood and Dirty Harry. You know, Clint Eastwood used to say, a man must know his limitations. And of course, you have to know your adversary's weaknesses. Well, right now, that homework, that understanding is showing up. Very nice work to the head. The right hand landed. And this round comes to an end. The quick takeaway from the first three rounds is that one guy's got the higher punch output, the other one's lagging behind as we start round number four. Teddy scorecard three rounds to none. Yeah, the one... That was a left hand that came raining in on him. He just, what a big shot. Oh, an explosive headshot there. He is down. One, two, three, four, five. Butterbean's still in a tough spot here. Don't get fooled just thinking he beat the count and everything's fine. And I'm not so sure that he can grab. So what you got to do now, if you're a trainer, the way you taught him in the gym is you don't want to go grab because you might leave yourself open. Move your head when he comes to you, then you grab him. Ali's game plan must have been that he's going to end this fight very early with his power. Because just looking at the way he's acting in there, that's not a fighter who thinks he's going long. Teddy, I think he's going to go down. I think he's going to go down after getting tagged right there. Did you see that? Well, we know he survived earlier, but now he goes down for a second time. One, two, three, four. Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Round number one is now underway. All the talk is done. It is simply time to fight.
Ali's jab has to be first and foremost on his to-do list, isn't it, Teddy? Yeah, I would say so. You ever see that commercial where the guy says, how do you spell relief? Sure. It, well, it's kind of like, how do you spell victory in this fight? J-A-B. That's exactly the way you go. That's what he wants. Power puncher versus the high stamina fighter. How does the high stamina fighter want this fight to unfold as it goes along? Well, the high stamina fighter, what he wants to do is he wants to get a lead. Get the lead, go out there quick out of the gate. And then later on, you have the power puncher looking for one shot at a time. He's gonna be searching them all night and he's never gonna find them. Halfway through this round here. Keep your distance, range. A well-placed left hand up top. That's where he wants to be able to do some damage with his opponent backed up against the ropes. Good accuracy. Oh, he is stunned. He could go down. He got rocked. He just got rocked, and he's still taking punches. The only way right now is to grab on a little bit, stop this flow. Able to block that away. It was targeted for his head. Good return fire that time. Right hand over the top, very accurate with it. And now another left. Last 10 seconds of this first round. All right, breathe, deep breath, get some water. He seems fully recovered to me. Here we are, the start of a new round, and a fighter that got tagged hard in the last round seems as fresh as could be. Well, when you push a fighter, when you push a human being to a dark place, that's when you're gonna find out what's right inside of them, what's great inside of them, and he's responding just that way. Accurate shot, straight right hand comes in. Blocks that belt line well. Great job, he gave one right back in return. Nice work by Muhammad Ali. Butterbean's giving his opponent headaches here now. He's throwing punches, but he's able to block them away. Halfway through round number two. Right hand crashes home. He never saw it coming. He should tie up. Gets rid of that. It was intended for his head. A solid one-two combo left-right by Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali with a piercing hook. Ali's right hand scores well. Butterbean's defense. Is it ever good? Look at how easy he's able to block those punches. Keeps his hands up defensively, protecting the head. A little give and take, and here comes the left hand. Accurate uppercut after taking a shot of his own. Able to cover up that gut. Ali's been in this game long enough to understand what has to happen now. You come off a round in which your opponent got to you and got to you well. You have to bounce back. Wow, what a right hand from Muhammad Ali. Butterbean's left, landing well. Oh, a nice two-punch combo by Muhammad Ali. Ali's making for a clinic here in combination punching. Well, the first couple punches here, Joe, they're throwaway punches to really set up the payoff down the road. You see the third punch, the fourth punch, the fifth punch. They're the ones that wind up landing. Comes across with a hook up top. Little head hunting with the left. Boxing 101, jab, followed by the straight. That worked.
worked out really well. Throwing off the right hand after getting tagged like that. Showing you what it takes to be the best in this business. Good, crisp combos. Watch that. Start of round number four, a chance for us to look at Teddy's scorecard. He's trailing three rounds to zip Teddy. People will be looking at this and say, yeah, but he's throwing punches. But Teddy, it's about throwing clean, effective punches. Exactly. And it's about not standing in front of your opponent after you punch and waiting for the receipt. Good block. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Muhammad Ali is having a field day against his opponent. Now, if you're standing opposite him, you got to solve this, or else it's just going to snowball. It's going to go downhill quick. You're going to lose this fight. So you do, Joe. The conventional way, the standard way that everyone's used to seeing with a tall guy that's keeping reins like this is you work your way in. But there's another way, too. Maybe you step out and you get him to give up his height, his reins, invite him in a little bit, and then all of a sudden, bang, you slam the trap on him. 90 seconds to go in round number four. Butterbean's off mark all night long, and Teddy, he's getting tired just missing punches. Well, this is a good example. You know, we know what happens when they land, but this is a good example of what happens when they don't land. Sometimes you get a little discouraged. Scoring with the right hand by Muhammad Ali. Ali's at his best when the combinations are landing. He scored well there with that combo. Last 10 seconds. This round comes to an end. A round in which this fighter threw a lot of punches, didn't land a lot of punches. I'll tell you, what advice can you give to him if you're the trainer? Well, first of all, deal with the psychological part. Joe, don't forget, 75% of this game is psychological. Don't let him get discouraged because even though he's not going to say nothing, in his head he's starting to get discouraged. Just say to him, hey, listen, you're going to catch him. Let's shorten him up a little bit. And you know what? He's moving his head, so go to the body. Look at that. That combination puts him down. Trainer is thrilled with this. He gets up off the canvas. Now he wants to see how he'll react. Oh, that's a big hook right there. Took a shot. Now he gives a left. Protecting his head well with his guard. Halfway into round number five here. Teddy, what does he need to do right here? He has no balance. His legs aren't underneath him. Well, you know he can't move because he's going to fall on his own or the referee's going to stop it. So believe it or not, he's either got to grab or he's got to stand on a rope, stay right in front of the guy and move his head to make a miss. He can't no, use no, his no, legs. You can see he's trying to score up top, he's but off the mark there. In. Targeting that head with the combination punching. 
Ali's hand speed is the difference here. I mean, that's what that combination was all about. Yeah, purely speed. He just got off faster. Suda. Goes up top with the right hand. Oh, he's hurt right there. He is hurt. So in this kind of situation, it's kind of like a wounded animal. Yeah, you can go after him, but you better be careful because he'll strike out when you don't expect it. He is not in good shape. He could be on the deck in moments. That last round really damaged him. Butterbean's face does not look good at all. You can see his corner trying to tend to him. Yeah, they tended to him a little too late. What about in the gym? What about in training camp where you got to teach a guy, move your head, don't get caught so you won't look that way? Maybe they didn't do their job. Solid right hand lands. Oh, that's got to hurt. He was able to get up and continue on last time. Now he goes down again. So now the question becomes, after that knockdown, and he has gotten up, how does he survive? So one of the ways he survives is if he's been taught. Have good habits, have good fundamentals been put there. You're going to find out right now, he needs them right now. See, the defense pays off as he gets rid of that downstairs. And now committing to that midsection as the target with the combination punching. Oh, he's hurt right there. He is hurt. You know, his opponent's doing a good job of just being patient now and looking for that one good shot. Well, you know, the landscape of this business, the history of this business is littered. Hard charging with that right hand. And yet another big shot comes in. Wow, he goes down again. This going to be caught the elevator fight. Up and down all night. We welcome you. Well, they've been waiting for this moment, and now they get it. Round one underway. Good combination to the body. It's a mighty list of power punchers that Muhammad Ali has continually faced. You got Joe Frazier on there. You got George Foreman on there. And tonight, now this power puncher opposite him. Well, you have two problems with that power. Two of them when you face Ali. One is, how do you land it? You have to find the perfect spot. Maybe catch him, pull him back with his hands down. You know, maybe time him as he's throwing a jab. But very difficult to do. And then the second problem, you have a guy that you're hitting that has a great chin. Committing to the head work, you see him go there again. Turns over that hook and he does damage upstairs. Halfway through round number one. Oh, and he's got something for him himself and it's a left hand. Good defensive skill. A well-targeted classic one-two by Muhammad Ali. Phenomenal pace being set here. They are burning it up early on. Let's find out who's in better shape. We're gonna see. Hits him in the mug with the right. Ali's hoping that his strategy of utilizing his jab pays off. How can it do so, Teddy? What will that bring to him? Well, it's going to bring a lot of things. First of all, defense, separation. It's going to keep his opponent at a distance where he can't harm him. Hey, if you're a fighter and a guy can't harm you, guess what? That's a good thing. The other thing is to set up his other punches. Butterbean's right hand working well that time. He scored well. Now he's targeting upstairs. Good effective work with that straight right hand. Scored well up top.
A solid uppercut by Muhammad Ali. Good job. And he engages in the clinch. Reaching the halfway mark of this round. Well played, straight right hand. And he ties up on the inside. Able to dismiss that body shot. Tucks those elbows in, blocks the body shot. Butterbean's inability to hit the target is really making him look silly right now. He's throwing plenty of punches, just none of them are landing. No, he's throwing them too wide, too far away, and what's going to be worse, right now he's only getting frustrated, maybe embarrassed as you touched on, but what's going to be worse is when he starts getting counted in between them. That is exactly what the corner wanted to see. A good combination punch by Muhammad Ali. Hey, you got Harry brings the jab right hand. Interesting to see how this plays out from here. Butterbean's cut is now changing the course of this fight. Well, the fight has been trying to do his job. Now the corner man is the most important person right now in that ring. He has to do his job and stop that bleeding. Takes a step back, then the counter punch by Muhammad Ali. Very similar to what you see Floyd Mayweather do. You know, make a miss, pull that shoulder back, and then come right back with the counter. How about a return to sender with the left hand? Muhammad Ali's opponent has to find a way to close that gap. He can't just let him control this fight from the outside. And the way he's got to do it is, first of all, get to the starting gate. He's not getting to the starting gate. You know, his opponent stepping away from him. Step up into the right position a little bit. Bring your feet forward and then use that jab to come in. And make sure you take steps. Don't lunge. Walk your way in behind that jab. Really good work right there, landing the two punches in sequence by Muhammad Ali. There's that overhand right. And we come to the end of the round. This is a classic example we're seeing here as we start round number four of just the busier guy taking the fight. He's up three rounds to zip on Teddy's scorecard. Yeah, my concern, though, so I have one little concern. What's there. that? Well, is he winning the battles, but maybe going to lose the war because he's really wearing himself out. He's working so hard to get things done. Down the road, does he pay a price? And now we got a fight. He fires back a right hand of his own. Nice work to the midsection with the left. Ali's impressing the judges and himself with that right hand. Committing to the work downstairs with the left. He takes a shot and then commits to giving one right back. Halfway through round number four. What an excellent two-punch combo by Muhammad Ali. Ali's hand speed right now, the difference with what we just saw, able to land that combination. Yeah, he's probably going to need a little bit more down the road, but right now, that's got him in front. Butterbean starting to bleed from the nose. His corner should be wary of that. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. Oh, he took some damage, but he gave some back with the right hand. He 
Boom. Keep moving. Not able to land the headshot. Ten seconds. Oh, that's a big shot with the left hand. And bang, and away he goes. He goes down in the later stages of this round. He's going to try to survive it. One, two, three, four, five. And that's the end of round four. Butterbean's cut man is going to earn his pay for sure. That is a bad gash. And I wondered what he's using in there. You know, you can only use certain things, Avatine, Adrenaline, and Thrombus. I'm wondering if he's using illegal things right now because that's the kind of cut that tempts you to use crazy glue. They trade shots. He comes back with a right hand. Butterbean's got to prove a few things here. Number one, he's got to prove to his opponent that he's on good ground after being knocked down in the last round. But he's also got to prove it to the referee, too. Yeah, he does. And his corner. Because his corner, I just noticed, they put that towel over their shoulder. So they know the condition their fight is in. They know their responsibility. And they're ready to act on it. by Muhammad Ali. Both men digging in with uppercuts. Well-targeted two-punch combo by Muhammad Ali. There's no need to be on the inside. A little something for his opponent after getting tagged. Dismisses his opponent's headshot. A crushing two-punch combo by Muhammad Ali. Gotta make it. Here we go. The start of the sixth round. Well, the quick read on this guy, if you watch this fight so far, is that he just doesn't jab enough. And that's the most basic thing in the world. You need that punch to make everything else happen. Very nice work from both men. They each got a shot in. Good power punch. The right hand landed. Oh, and there you go. And he crashes to the canvas once again. He's gotten up before. What about this time? One, two, three, four, five. So now the question becomes, after that knockdown, and he has gotten up, how does he survive? So this is where instincts kick in. You got to start moving that head automatically right now. You don't want to stay in the middle. He took a shot, but he gives one of his own. A left hand scores. That's a well placed hook by Muhammad Ali. It's okay. Pay him back. He is damaged badly there. He may hit the big, big shot he just scored with. Knocked down again. Unreal. Now you got to wonder what the corner's thinking. Are they going to stop this? The fight is over. Ali's gunned down yet another opponent. A knockout victory. Muhammad Ali's power that we saw throughout the night building a lead on your scorecard now ends the night with a knockout victory. And it begins the next night, the next dawn, the dawn of the new beginning. More money.
Good evening, everybody. Alongside Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. We welcome you ringside for a much anticipated bout. Let's set the table. Everybody's been waiting for these two to meet up. Now they do as round one is underway. What does the jab offer him here? Victory. It's as simple as that. It sure is. A well-placed overhand right. Keep working the jab. Now he ties up there. You know, boxing is a global sport. I think sometimes in North America, we lose touch of that. But boxing is such a global sport. And every little region of the country defines its fighters differently. And the fighters are defined by where they come from. Yeah, it really is. You know, sometimes if a fighter is from maybe a place where there's not many resources, then you're going to get a fighter who's a little cruder and he's going to have to be more physical because, you know, he doesn't have the apparatuses in the gym where, you know, he can hit a double end ball or, you know, he can be inclined to be a little bit more technical. Okay, and I go. think that you're influenced by those kind of things, by the lackings of certain benefits in somebody's background or preparation. A headshot blocked. One for you now, he says. Right back with the left hand. See, he's got his guard up really well that time, and it protects his head. A target on his head, and he places the hook right on it. Ten seconds of round number one. How does the power puncher actually use the jab to close the gap against this outside fighter? How does he employ that strategy? So I think it's a little bit like if you're a carpenter and you're making a table. You take your measuring stick out and you see how much wood you need, how long the table is. Well, same thing if you're a fighter who wants to get inside with a boxer, you got to see how much distance you have to close. If there's a lot of distance, you need three, two jabs. One is not going to work. He comes with a straight right hand. Took a shot. Now he gives a left. Boom. Left hand comes home. Jab, you get sent to the camp. One, two, three, four. Five. Butterbean's back up on his feet. Let's see what he has now. Oh, and he returns fire with a left hand. fatigue is starting to play a major factor in this fight now he is having trouble landing any of these punches yeah and it's not because his opponent all of a sudden is a great defensive whiz you know he's not Claude Waynes he didn't all of a sudden become the invisible man it's just that he's not landing because he's thrown him from too far away as you said very tired big shot the left crashed home big shot late goings here of this round and he goes down can he survive it Ali's bombs away worked again. Knockout victory for him. Oh, that's a big win. That's a big win that's going to get everybody in the division's attention. Muhammad Ali's power ends this early. You see results like this sometimes from combination, but one shot, wow.
For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Have yourself. Ladies and gentlemen. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Fifteen rounds scheduled here in this much-anticipated fight, and we are underway with round number one. That was not well targeted by Muhammad Ali. Power puncher facing a high stamina guy, a well-conditioned guy. How can the well-conditioned fighter best guard his body so that the power puncher isn't targeting him? Oh, move it. Get on his bicycle a little bit. Don't stay right in front. If that power puncher is the power puncher, that's his strength. But his weakness is he probably has to have you right in front. Give him angles. Back to body. He missed with that headshot. Halfway through this round. Butterbean's right hand scores well that time. <laughs> Muhammad Ali's knowledge of the game is showing through. Three ways to defend, one of them is to block. He did it there well. Butterbean's right hand did a nice job that time. That worked well for him. Good defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. Oh, and what impact with those double uppercuts by Muhammad Ali. Ten seconds to go in this round. Solid left hand to the head. This round comes to an end. And Teddy, easy to note here that he wasn't landing a lot of punches. Now he was throwing them up, but he wasn't landing a lot. Is that because of his opponent's defense, or is he just not that accurate of a puncher? No, it's a combination. First of all, his opponent's pretty slick in there, pretty good at bobbing, weaving a little bit, slipping a little bit, making himself a difficult target. But his punch is a little wide. Needs to shorten them up. Blocks away that headshot. He's tired. Yeah. Thought he had his target, but way off to the side with the uppercut. Nice work. Able to get away from that headshot with the block. There's that proficient jab by Muhammad Ali. Keep working the bus. Commits to the straight right. So right from the start in this fight, he's committed to the body shots. Well, that's the time to go there right at the beginning because body work pays off for you later in the fight. No sense in wasting time. Get right to it. Hey, if you can throw them all, you may just land them all, and he does with that four-punch combination. <laughs> Oh, that's good stuff. Fire him right back with one of his own. Good work by Muhammad Ali. Butterbean's getting himself into the mix now, landing that left hand. Butterbean's movement's really helping him out, avoiding that punch. Ali's scoring with that right hand. left by Muhammad Ali. Final 10 seconds of round number two. Butterbean's right hand scores well. And that's the end of round two. Ali's plan is clearly to go upstairs against his opponent. And to do so, he's staying out of that danger zone, Teddy. How would you attack that? Well, first of all, you need to move your head. Take that height advantage away. You know, slip to either side a little bit, and all of a sudden, get inside that jab. 